Good afternoon. I know uh, the three of us and the uh, presenter after us is between you and uh, Saturday evening happy hour they have been longing for since yesterday. So I'm going to get on to it. Uh, so uh, no, thanks for introductions. My name is uh, Ren Na. I'm a uh, pilot, support, uh, pilot program support engineer from the MathWorks. Uh, the front here, uh, two of my colleagues. Uh, we have uh, Yanlang Zhang. Uh, he's an uh, uh, industry marketing manager who specializes in the uh, robotics area. And uh, Remo Pilat, a uh, software developer, also specializes in, in, uh, in robotics. Uh, we're here today uh, to introduce you to a uh, feature uh, MathWorks make available uh, since January 2014 that uh, enable our users uh, to interact with ROS from MATLAB. Uh, it's called MATLAB ROS IO package. Uh, well, since its availability in January, we have, uh, we have gotten over uh, 1,000 downloads so far. Um, and and you know, to keep momentum going, uh, we, we're here. Um, in fact, uh, we have a uh, three-hour hands-on workshop tomorrow at IROS uh, to, to sort of explain how our users can actually use that in, you know, within the MATLAB environment to create notes, uh, ROS notes. Um, so uh, you know, this, this presentation right here is really a, a higher level overview of what we're going to do tomorrow. Just, just kind of give you an idea in terms of what its capability and the motivation behind why we do this. OK, so uh, for the talk today, I'm just going to do a quick introduction of, of what MATLAB ROS IO package is. Just on one slide. Uh, and then I will explain uh, the motivation behind it. Um, and then talk about the key features. And at the end, we're going to do a uh, live demonstrations. Uh, so to set expectation, right? I mean, we have gotten this demo to work, trust me, in three different states across the United States. We have gotten it to work for the past few months. Uh, but if you have any experience doing live demonstration in front of a large audience, you know how it would be like when you actually demo it. So if it fails, it's you, not me. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right. So uh, MATLAB ROS IO package, as I mentioned earlier, is a uh, downloadable package that is uh, available right now. Uh, you can actually download it uh, at mathworks.com. Uh, um, it's a, MATLAB, a set of MATLAB-based API uh, intended for our users to interact uh, with ROS directly from MATLAB. Uh, it allows you to create a ROS node directly in MATLAB um, and then exchange data with existing nodes, right? No, in either a simulator or an actual robot uh, using publisher uh, and, and the subscribers. Um, uh, for, for, for users who like to uh, sort of create the network within MATLAB, right? Not instead of interacting with other things outside of MATLAB, they want to just sort of a, a, a contain a network, a ROS network within MATLAB. Uh, we provide the capability to actually ro uh, launch a call from MATLAB as well. Okay, so if you want to do something just within MATLAB, no, you can do that too. Uh, so uh, along with the package, uh, we separately uh, make available a download of an example uh, to show you how you can take advantage of the features to, uh, to work with Gazebo and uh, the actual TurtleBot. Okay? Uh, it's, it's not the exact same example that we're going to be demonstrating today, but you know, it, 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 it sort of have that flavor. Um, it's uh, supported on four different releases on MATLAB, uh, starting from 2000, uh, release R2012B, 13A, 13B, and the latest one, uh, which is 14A. Uh, just to highlight the fact that, you no, know, uh, given the fact that, you no, know, we, we get it running on different four, four different releases of MATLAB, and the fact that MATLAB runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac, uh, you can actually take advantage of this feature to interact with ROS from all those different platforms. Now, when we say Linux right here, we are actually talk, talking about a different type of distribution. It's not limited to just Ubuntu. Okay, so MATLAB is actually a uh, um, well, before I get on to this, just, just for a show of hand here, how many of you uh, in this audience here actually use MATLAB? Oh, it's quite, quite a number. So as you can see, MATLAB is actually a, a commonly used tool, uh, even in the field of robotics. Uh, it's mainly because of the fact that you know, it's very powerful when it comes to data processing, right? You know, visualization, and the fact that you know, with, with the two boxes that you can add on to it and allow you to do, do your analysis, your algorithm design, and allow you to quickly prototype whatever that you have in mind, your algorithm. Uh, and that's why it is very widely used, both in commercial and, uh, and academia. Uh, this example that I have here, uh, no, not, not related to Ross, but no, we have this uh, a professor from the university uh, that actually teach a robotic course based on MATLAB and Simulink. Uh, the, the little Mindstrom robot right here is actually running on uh, code that is generated from a Simulink model. Um, 
ROS, on the other hand, uh, is, uh, is also very powerful and popular. It's, you know, it's, it's extremely popular among uh, ROS developer, and I'm sure you guys know the reason more than I do, but it's mainly because of the fact that you know, it, you know, within, the, within the, uh, the, the, the community itself, it comes with a, uh, a rich set of libraries for all, ty all type of algorithms and hardware, uh, and the fact that it's very flexible when it comes to like, handling a distributed set of you know, complex applications. Okay? So, on one hand, uh, we have MATLAB that is very commonly used during the early stages of design, right? It's because of the fact that it's very user-friendly, the, uh, the nature of the language that it's very user-friendly. Uh, uh, a lot of our users kind of like to use it to explore data, let, explore some ideas at the early stages. Uh, on the other hand, we have ROS. You know, it's very powerful and, and it's, uh, it's flexible in terms of handling different uh, I mean, a network of applications, okay? So today, well, I shouldn't say today, but before this January, perhaps, uh, no, for, for our users, MATLAB users who like to do the prototyping in MATLAB, um, and, and before they can actually verify their prototype or algorithm uh, with all the other existing nodes that is already running right now, they would actually have to uh, hand convert the MATLAB algorithm into C++, perhaps. You know, something in a native, native form, build it, uh, launch it, and, and see how it interacts. Um, and you know, obviously, we don't usually do our design in one shot. There's many, many iterations of work that get involved before you finally come to something that is workable. So imagine that you now you have to prototype in MATLAB, verify in ROS, and the fact that you got to do it you know, 10, 20, perhaps a couple hundred iterations, the process becomes extremely tedious, time consuming. It's very, it becomes very costly. Uh, we actually have customers that actually approach us and say, no, I mean, math works. I mean, we, 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 we use ROS heavily, but we like to prototype in MATLAB. You know, would you consider doing something to enable uh, you know, us to use the best of both worlds? So this is the main motivation behind what we're showing you today. Okay? So with MATLAB ROS I.O. package, what we do here is, you know, we, you know, with the package, we, we enable you to actually launch a ROS node directly in MATLAB. Right, you can have publisher, subscriber, on the node that's running on MATLAB that, that interact with all the other nodes, the existing one that's running on either a simulator or an actual robot, like in this case, that we're gonna demonstrate later. Okay, so for that reason, uh, no, if, if you had to go through like hundreds of iterations, you can imagine that now, instead of prototyping something in MATLAB, hand convert into C++, verify it in ROS 100 times, you can actually do all the work in MATLAB during the early and you know, intermediate stages. Now obviously, if you're willing to deploy the algorithm with the installation of MATLAB, you can actually just do all your work in MATLAB. Okay, we don't stop you from doing that. But uh, we also be realistic that you know, in most cases, uh, when you do, when you come to time for deployment, you will probably want to do a MATLAB-free deployment. So you may still have to do a conversion, okay, a hand translation from MATLAB to C++, but in this case, you will probably only have to do it one or twice at the very end instead of having to do it like every single iteration. So this is the reason why we, 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 we provide that capability. Okay, so this is the same diagram that I showed you earlier. Right? This talks about uh, ROS. I wouldn't call it an ecosystem, but it's more like a, a layers of what is available. So with MATLAB ROS IO package, this is what the diagram looks like. Right? At the top right here, your algorithm now can actually run directly in MATLAB. Okay, so let us take a little closer, right? So as I explained earlier, MATLAB is very powerful when it comes to you now providing capability to process data, visualizations, right, and designing and prototyping an algorithm. And with MATLAB ROS IO package, what we do here now, we basically enable you to interact with uh, a ROS-based simulator or a ROS-based uh, robot directly within MATLAB environment without you to having to do any uh, translation work going forward, okay? So, just you know, as the main highlight right here, just want to mention that you know, our, 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 our main core purpose right here is really to accelerate the creation of ROS-based application. Okay, so that means we want to, you know, with this capability, what we really want to do is to allow developers to focus on the algorithm instead, on, instead of having to spend half of the time doing the programming. Okay, so we also want to provide the ROS developer to prove the concept uh, you know, using what with, with the actual ROS enabled robots uh, with minimal effort. 
Okay, so that's 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 the main 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 motivation. Um, so we identified three areas in which this package can be very useful. Um, you can use it to you know at the at the beginning of your uh, study, right? You can actually create a subscriber, for example, to connect to the robot, bring the data in, and you can actually uh, interactively explore what is what the data is like, right? The different feel of a message, uh, what are the types, and and you know what are the kind of a uh, a value that, that, that it carries, okay? And in fact, we do the same thing right here. Uh, you no, know, we will be doing a, a ball tracking demonstration. We actually do the same thing to actually bring in a, a raw camera uh, image into MATLAB and, and, and look at what that data looks like and figure out how we convert the raw image into MATLAB image that we can actually display, okay? Uh, the other two is actually a given, right? As I've been stressing that already, uh, it allow you to in, uh, basically interact with ROS nodes uh, running on simulator or running on the actual robots, okay? So this is just an example to show you that, you know, uh, in this case, uh, we created a, a ROS message, right, uh, you know, in MATLAB, and from here, the IntelliSense can kind of kick in right here. You can, you can see that, you know, when you do a, a tab completions, uh, you know, a pawn on a, a message object, uh, the different fields shows up. You know, it, it can, from here, you can actually tell the different type of fields that is con contained inside the, uh, uh, the message and so on. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can also go to the documentation and figure out what you have in there, but it's just sort of convenient. Uh, you know, in MATLAB, they, you know, those fields just automatically popped up. Um, moving on here, you can see that we have created a uh, MATLAB graphical user interface uh, to interact with Gazebo. So this is a turbo running in Gazebo. Um, in this case, we have a couple of uh, subscribers. One subscribed to the camera image, and you can see how the image is being displayed, and the other one is the laser scan. Uh, there is also well, now something I'm not going to do right here, is that you know, at the top right here, at the upper right-hand corner of the, the, the graphical user interface, we actually have some navigation button right here that, you know, that is responsible for publishing some velocity command to actually move the robot. Okay? And this is exactly the same application, the same graphical user, user interface, all that we have done is to toggle the IP address to connect to a natural robot instead of Gazebo. The same application. You can see how the robot is moving uh, and, and the image change, changes. Okay? So, uh, moving on to live demonstrations. Uh, and before we actually cut the robot loose right here, uh, let me explain what we're trying to do. Uh, and I'm actually going to do a, a quick calibration demonstration first before we, we go on and let, and let the robot move around. So the problem that we're trying to solve here, imagine, uh, is to create an algorithm that detects a ball. In this case, it's a green ball. You, you know, we do have to specify the color, a green ball, uh, within the, uh, the robot camera view, and then you know, provide some sort of a motion control to, to, to ask the robot to, to maintain a constant distance from, from the object it is tracking, which is a green ball in this case. Okay. So just to clarify, uh, all the image processing, as well as the motion, on control, uh, the motion control algorithm, are all done in MATLAB. Okay, so we're actually launching a node that takes the raw camera image, okay, which is a subscriber, the subscriber raw camera image, and then use MATLAB to process the, the data, right? Now filter out all the color that we do not want, and then search for the region of something that we're interested at, uh, and then provide the data back to a, uh, well, in this case, a PD controller uh, that responsible for calculating the required velocity command based on the offset and horizon of the, of the object they were tracking uh, to, to, to move the robot, to follow it, basically. Okay, sounds simplistic, okay? Uh, so just to kind of reiterate on you know, the, the, the concept of the package itself and, and, and the workflow that we've gone through, uh, you know, initially we used ROS IO package to kind of connect to the actual, actual robot, bring in live data, and study it. Okay, so I mentioned that earlier. Uh, and then we take the live data, basically capture it in, in files, right, and then make, make use of this data to actually help us do the, uh, the development, right, make use of existing toolbox function in MATLAB. Uh, we come up with the, uh, the, the proper uh, image processing algorithm that allows us to detect what we are looking for. Uh, and then moving on, we actually put a layer of the API on top to convert it into a ROS node and then connect to uh, Gazebo and see how uh, the robot behave. Uh, well, that stage, during that stage, we actually do some tuning, you know, to make sure that it behaves the way we want. Uh, we tune both the, uh, the, 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 the image detecting parameter as well as the, uh, uh, the PD controller parameter, just to make sure that you know, it, it sort of behaves and moves the way we want it. Uh, and then 
after having enough confidence, uh, we switch the IP address to the actual robot and, and see how it performs. And that is where we do the, uh, the fine tuning at the, at the final stage. Okay? Uh, the beauty of this is that you know, with, with this package, something I want to highlight is all three stages, right, the development algorithm, uh, test in simulator as well as testing this robot, they are all running the exact same algorithm. Okay, the only difference is that at the, at the, at the final two stages, we add an additional layer of, of the API to actually uh, interact with ROS. Okay, but the, the, the core algorithm itself, the image processing algorithm, and the, the motion control algorithm, they, they, they are exactly identical. Okay, so, um, I need to do this. I'm gonna switch to MATLAB real quick to demonstrate uh, a uh, calibration effort uh, so, for those of you who, who have done um, vision control or image processing uh, with, with live data, perhaps realize that uh, you know, you know, it, it takes a lot of effort to actually develop the algorithm. Uh, it also takes a lot of effort to calibrate it, right? I mean, it's quite sensitive to, to lighting, uh, the lighting condition. Or perhaps it's because of the fact that we're not the vision expert here, <laughs> but we, we do find the fact that uh, uh, de depending on where we run the algorithm, we often have to calibrate the, uh, the parameters, the thresholding parameters a little bit. Otherwise, it starts tracking things that we do not want it to. You may be finding more things than we want it to or may not find anything at all, okay? Uh, so it's just something that we gotta do, something that you will probably have to do on your daily work. Um, and if you are doing it you know, entirely in ROS, you will find it quite tedious, right? You gotta change the parameter, rebuild, you know, and then relaunch, uh, no, let it be just a changing of a parameter, but it's the process to still take a few minutes. Uh, with MATLAB, uh, what I can do here, what I wanted to do here is to demonstrate, you no, know, it's just a matter of a second. You now, after I launch the node, I can just go to the MATLAB, change the parameter, and I can just do a snapshot of the image. So what I want to do here, uh, on the stage here, you can see that there are, there are two robots, okay? Um, I have the, the robot without the ball is the one that I'm gonna connect to, and I'm, I'm gonna try to capture the raw camera image, pass it to the algorithm that we will be demonstrating later on, and I will show you how the thresholding works, right? You're gonna see uh, a figure with, with the raw image as well as the binary image after processing, okay? And I will show you how easy it is to actually calibrate that, you know, adjust the parameter in MATLAB and reduce capture again. Very straightforward. Now, we are actually doing some sort of a open loop calibration, right? It's kind of crude. No, nothing fancy, but imagine that. Now, in the case where you have something that is really sophisticated, complex, you can actually do this in a closed loop manner. And there's nothing prevent you from doing what I do, but actually latch it on to, let's say, optimization toolbox to actually optimize and run it iteratively to find you something that would work best. Okay, so that is the power of bringing both world together, MATLAB and ROS, through MATLAB ROS IO package. All right, so um, that's running. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is to uh, go ahead and start a node on MATLAB that connect to the core on this robot here without the ball. I'm not gonna go into the detail of the API. If you're really interested in learning the API, then, then we, can, we, can, we can talk more during the workshop tomorrow. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, and then right here, those are the five parameters, let's say that you know, I, the algorithm is uh, actually is, is relying on to do the uh, processing. So let's say this is the wild gas that I have preliminary. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this real quick. And that is the raw image that this robot is seeing. The bottom, you can see that the ball is here, but it is not finding the ball. It is finding the largest area. Um, and because of the running condition, it is because the fact that I'm being a little too conservative in, trash, uh, in, in filtering out the green component, it is finding the flaw. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this. In this case, I already know what the, the right value is, so let me just show you what it would be if, if you know, after server, server iteration, you can see that, you know, all you have to do is go in here, change the value, rerun it. Actually, let me close the figure. And here you go. So, in a matter of a few seconds, maybe a couple minutes, no, um, no I'm, giving you the simplistic view right here. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that obviously, you know, in the actual image processing algorithm, it's more sophisticated. But the idea right here is that in the MATLAB, no, I, there is no rebuilding, there is nothing that I need to do else other than the fact that I'm changing the parameter and then just rerun the, the function to actually return the snapshot. Okay? 
So now we're going to go ahead and uh, cut the robot loose. Um, just to make sure I'm not interfering with this, let me stop the note. Okay. Okay, let me explain the setup a little bit. Um, okay, so as far as the setup is concerned here, um, I have actually two ROS network going on here, okay? Um, the one on the right is, is what I just explained, the wall tracking and, and following uh, demonstration. But we, uh, we also have a teleoperator robot network right here, uh, which consists of the turtle robot itself, an Android device that is running the, uh, the ROS Android sensor driver, okay? responsible for publishing the IMU data to the turtle board. Uh, and then we have a, um, a MATLAB laptop sitting on the stair right here. Okay, you're not seeing it right here. There's a, uh, there's a laptop on the stairs that is running MATLAB, and it actually has the, uh, the teleoperator node that we have created. Uh, it basically subscribes to the Android IMU, okay, do time uh, transformation, and then uh, return the velocity command to move this turtle board. And you can see Yin Yang right here is actually steering it using the Android device right here. Okay. Um, well, at least it worked 50% so far. Um, and then, for as far as the board tracking, uh, we have a again a turtle board. Um, in this case, there will be two different laptops. Uh, there will be one on my end. I'm going to connect you later on. Just going to show you what is the odometry and camera data looks like. So we will subscribe to both odometry and camera image to show you. And uh, uh, Remo already started the uh, the second one that is actually subscribing to the camera image. Right? It takes the uh, the image in detect the green bar based on the threshold parameter that I, that, that I kind of demonstrated earlier, and, and then provide velocity command to follow it. Well, this thing actually have a bumper uh, subscriber, which I did not explain. So whenever it, uh, it bumped into the other one, uh, it would backtrack a little bit. Okay, uh, so on my end, I can, sorry. I'm going to go ahead and run a, a node here. Uh, this basically just display uh, the image data and the odometry data of the, uh, the tracker board. Um, OK. I think I'm running it. Is it not doing anything? Is it still working? Oh, it doesn't work. Hold on. Let me just restart this real quick. Oh, you shut down already, maybe? Start it again. Um, well, I'm almost done, so I just want to do something real quick here. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it works this time. Yeah, it is not connecting earlier. It's maybe maybe the uh, the call shut down for for a few seconds earlier. So let's see if this works. running right now. Yep, so you can see that you know, we're subscribing to the, uh, the camera image. Uh, we actually have a laser scan as well. I didn't talk about that. And you can see the odometry data is actually changing. Um, trust me, when we were playing with this, they never come that close. I don't know what happened, right? But uh, you know, given not 
given the choice between not working at all versus working not really too well, I would take this. Okay, so uh, I think that's all for our, for our talk today. Um, actually, I do have one more thing, I'm sorry. I just want to highlight one thing um, at the end. Um, so as a closing remark right here, let me just, just, just provide a quick uh, uh, just highlight here. So MATLAB ROS I.O. package right, uh, really is just you know, allow both MATLAB and ROS users to take, av uh, take advantage of the best of both worlds. So you can take, uh, leverage the power of MATLAB for data analysis and algorithm design while you know, continue uh, to, to have the flexibility of ROS in handling the you know, network applications. Uh, and something that and I sort of mentioned but never really highlight on that is the fact that you know, with Ro uh, MATLAB ROS I.O. package, you, you know, potentially can gain access to a multi-platform access up to, to ROS. Right, I mean, realistically, if, if you're a ROS user, most likely you're running on Ubuntu, okay? So if you would like to be able to, you know, to, to access, uh, you know, create a node in just about any platform as you wish, like Windows or any other Linux distributions or, or, or Mac, I think, yeah, you can actually uh, take advantage of this, uh, basically creating the ROS node itself in MATLAB that runs on the platform of your choice. Um, so. Real quick here, uh, package that I just mentioned, uh, MATLAB ROS IO package, uh, it's available for download at mathworks.com slash ROS. Cannot remember the, the address, just look for MATLAB ROS uh, in Google. Uh, again, we will have a three hours hands-on workshop tomorrow at IROS to talk about how do you make use of this interface that I just explained. Uh, we're also gonna have a couple of partners, uh, Clearpath Robotics and Reading Robotics to actually do the demonstration uh, of, of the robots using uh, this package. Okay, so the, the workshop is actually at 1.30 to, to 5 p.m. tomorrow. Thank you. Um, the version that I'm, okay. Sorry, uh, the question is, is there any plan to support ROT services? Um, the package that we put online for download currently does not support it. However, and I removed, I believe Remo have enabled services on a specific type of uh, a robot. I'm not sure which, which partner robot that you have enabled. Uh, the question is, can I use a ROS publisher and subscriber on a simulink generated target? Um, the short answer is no, because uh, we know the, the package that we have available today do not support code generation yet. So it's, it's, it's strictly for just an early prototyping phase. Okay? Um, having that said, nothing prevents you from doing the, the, using the API in a, let's say, MATLAB function block in simulink. Doing the publisher will be straightforward. The subscriber, however, I'm not quite sure how that works. I think you'll probably have to do it in MATLAB and then end up calling the simulating model to do the simulation. So the order in, 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 term, in, in terms of how things work would be a little tricky. Yeah, it's, it's doable, I'm, I'm sure. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Huh? Thank you.